After Tim's success in the mountains above Benidorm for Barbary sheep, he's been offered the chance to spend the evening not as tradition demands, enjoying a busy bar and watching the world go by, but alone in a high seat looking for pigs and mutton. The terrain an hour north of the coast is very different to the sparsely covered mountain slopes and it offers plenty of opportunities for hunting. What animals have we got in this, in this part of the country? In this part of the country, always wild boars, because the wild boar in Spain, they are everywhere. But also there are some mufflons and, of course, barbary sheep, because it is, uh, it is the, the area in the east of Spain, barbary sheep, it is the king. From here to the 50 kilometers that is uh, flat, there is, a cult, there is a agriculture, then they come every night. As with any of these international hunting trips, it's always a surprise to see what is accepted when the lights go out, either stalking or on a high seat. What are the rules? You, but you can actually spot? You can spot, but you can spot, but you cannot shoot. Then you cannot, you cannot have a, one scope with night vision, uh, with uh, thermal vision. It is forbidden by law. But you can spot with, uh, it is forbidden the thermal, but not the night vision. Okay. Then you can use just to, to take a look at the dog. But listen, there are some wild boars coming. Then you take your rifle, you take your light, and you shoot. Okay. A few high seats along from us will be a bow hunter. This is the first time someone has been allowed to bow hunt in this area. 55 uh, pounds. 55 pounds pull. Yeah. No, no, it's very heavy and it's good for hunting. Uh, 25 meters uh, to 40 meters to shoot, to shoot in the night and in the, in the day, no problem. In Spain it's permit to use binoculars to see the animals in the night. So you spot I, them coming? I, yes, when I come in I can, uh, see, I can see if it's a, a female or it's a male and I can choose the animal I want to hunt. Bow hunting has grown very fast in Spain, helped by a handful of Spanish hunters sponsored by the big US bow brands. The high seat overlooks a waterhole. The animals could come from any direction, so Tim gets acquainted with the area and the night vision kit he's been loaned. Whenever I'm in a high seat, the first thing I do once I set myself down is look at my field of view and I'll just use my rangefinder just as so I mentally know exactly where everything is. There's a tree in the middle of the field there, it's 150 metres away. Um, or we, everything here is very close by, down through there, 130 metres. So I know literally exactly what range everything is. So if an animal does suddenly quickly turn, cut a pair here, I can actually just know exactly what the range is. So it's very useful to have a, a range finder, either in your binoculars or have a separate one, and just ping everything. And you make a mental note, and that's your shooting area. We came out here purely to hunt Barbary sheep, and uh, we've got the option now uh, of shooting mouflon and wild boar. How brilliant is that? It's tough to stay quiet in a tin high seat perched on metal chairs, but we do it, and a group of mouflon appear from the right. The high seat's probably about 50, 70 metres away, not very far at all. We're using a 308 calibre tonight, um, 150 grain ballistic tip, so um, quite a punchy round for a, such a small beast. Um, took it through the shoulder here, so it went down very, very quickly. 
Tim considers returning to the seat but then decides to clean the mouflon. He also has some advice for any would-be high seat tutors to ensure you don't destroy your hearing. My preference as a stalker is actually always on foot. Um, well, I just prefer it as opposed to high seats. But this high seat is made of tin and when I moved around very, very carefully, I just had the muzzle just past the window. But gosh, when that uh, 308 let rip, the whole tin just went and David's and I's, our ears just rang for about three minutes afterwards. So uh, you're quite a hefty calibre, um, but uh, that's what happens in, the, in these high seats sometimes. The most important thing is make sure your muzzle is outside of the high seat, otherwise it's very, very painful. Of course, the other advice is to wear ear protection. Very, very good condition actually, considering how uh, dry it is in Spain at the moment. They have got huge problems with, with the drought. It's now averaging about 40 degrees for about three weeks, which is quite unusual. And um, the Barbary sheep can survive because they, they, they eat the leaves to get the moisture. Whereas things like the mouflon and the boar, they desperately need the moisture. That's why they come into the water hole. So uh, it's not a good time for, for livestock, all livestock in, in, uh, in Spain. So this, uh, this little, little young lad will make absolutely beautiful eating. So uh, I'll go back in the food chain and uh, it's just lovely to see such a clean looking specimen. It's been a long day in Spain, but after a day charging around like a mountain goat, it's quite nice to sit and wait for the wildlife to come to us. For more information about hunting in Spain with Fernando, go to SpanishHunters.com.